What's up everybody? Today we are working on the 1975 D100. Wiring harness is a total mess. So if you have never worked on a wiring harness before, then you're in for a treat because I'm going to show you how to do it. And full disclosure, it can take days to figure out a wiring harness if it's a if it's something that's been chopped and hacked and and spliced into and you're trying to put it back to normal to make things run right it can take forever so gonna chop this video up a million different ways to try to make it look as if it's uh, quick and easy but it is it is not quick and easy so step one always disconnect the battery you never want to have a battery connected while you're messing with wires step two get you a really good wiring schematic buy these on Amazon. There's a company that sells them. It's fantastic. All of the colors are correct for your model year and your, your make and model. Then start somewhere on here and start working backwards. So for me, I started at the bulkhead connection, which is this guy. So you have an engine harness, you have a light harness, you have kind of your, your gauges and then your interior. And they all plug into these bulkhead connections and eventually meet up with the fuse block, but this is where I started. And so what I found is that there are two voltage regulators in this truck. There's one on the firewall and there's one on the fender well. I don't know why there's two, but my best guess, my best guess is that this is what happened. This being a 1975 truck with a big block 400, the VIN says that this is a 318 car. So I think what happened is this being a utility truck, they dropped in a salvage 400 big block. Then because they had miles of cables running all over the place, they had CB radios and speakers and light bars. They probably quickly realized that they did not have enough battery power to run all that stuff. So they had to have a bigger alternator. So it went from a regular, I think 60 amp to a 100 amp alternator uh, in there. And so <clears throat> the regular one would have been fine for a 318, a 400 plus all of the extra crap they put on needed the bigger alternator and a bigger battery to power all the stuff. So what happened is they did not update the wiring harness. And a lot of people don't think to do that, but here's what happened. So you have your battery, here is a fusible link and then you have your alternator, and then your alternator also has a fusible link. So if you upgrade your alternator, but do not add a fusible link, then you run the risk of having too much voltage running back to your wiring harness at the bulkhead connection. So I think what happened, <clears throat> they put on a bigger alternator, probably did not change out the voltage regulator, then their original voltage regulator died. So then they mounted a second voltage regulator rather than unplugging this one and putting a new one in, they added a second one to compensate for the burnt out one to compensate for the bigger alternator. So in order to get around all that, they spliced in an additional voltage regulator connection, a two wire here. And they did it in the most ghetto way possible. So on here, you can see that there are approximately one, two, three, four, five wires that are all mounted together in here. So then they spliced in two more pieces here for an additional voltage regulator uh, cable. And because of that, we have all kinds of issues downstream. So I've got this that I don't know really know what to do with. So this is my original. So here, according to the diagram, there should be a fusible link here. This is the black wire that runs back to the alternator and runs here through this bulkhead connection. So there should be a 100 amp fusible link. So somehow, some way, what I've got to do is I've got to throw in a fusible link right here. Because if I'm going to try to safely run that 100 amp alternator through a voltage regulator with regular wiring, then I need to do it right and add that fusible link here. And because they didn't do that, I'll see if it's easy to tell or not, 
but you can see that this got hot and the plastic is slightly discolored on the inside. And this terminal is black. That's because they're running 100 amps right through here with piss poor wiring through a voltage regulator, which probably is not even the right one. So all of that combined equals a situation where you could have a fire, you could just burn up your components and then nothing works right. And I've seen that a million times, especially in these old Mopars, people just, the hack it and they just don't understand, you know, what the downstream ramifications are. And a lot of times they just don't give a shit, right? It's just, what can I do right now to get me on the road as quick as possible? And so what happens is it burns out all kinds of other things. <clears throat> so this is only the first part that I've really dived into. Now I know there are other things going on in here that are also a mess that I'm gonna try to tackle. But I also have a donor wiring harness here, which is in better shape than mine. So somehow I'm going to try to merge these two wiring harnesses together. And I also have a third from a slant six, but that one's from a 440. Uh, and of course, this is my original 318 truck, currently with a big block 400. So between those three, I'm gonna try to find all the piece, pieces to put this together. Now I'm not opposed to splicing below the bulkhead um, and then getting all of the wires nice and, and tucked and <clears throat> made it together. I'm not opposed to that. I don't, I don't love it. I'd rather have a continuous piece because anytime you're dealing with electricity and then you go cutting it, if you have a bad connection, well, that's just one more point of failure that you have to troubleshoot. So I'd rather not do that, but I'm going to take inventory of what I do have and then try to figure out a way that I'm going to move forward with all of this to make it make sense because right now it does not. But if you're dealing with a Frankenstein truck like I am, that's just the nature of it. If you've ever done a hot rod, a rat rod, anything custom, nothing matches up and you've got to just figure it out. But yeah, you got to start with the ground one, which is a wiring harness. So that's what I'm doing. So anyway, this is part one to kind of level set on, on what we're doing. Uh, and I'm gonna have multiple parts, uh, try to keep the videos pretty short and as helpful as I can be. So thanks for watching.